the last six weeks, I preached on God's design for fathers to be teachers, to be protectors, to be providers. I read to you this resolution that was written and signed by the four men standing behind me. But instead of just talking about these men, I'm going to ask Adam Mitchell to come and speak to us. As a law enforcement officer, I've seen firsthand the deep hurt and devastation that fatherlessness brings in a child's life. Our prisons are full of men and women who have lived recklessly after being abandoned by their fathers, wounded by the men who should have loved them the most. Many of these children now follow the same pattern of irresponsibility that their fathers did. While so many mothers have sacrificed to help their children survive, they were never intended to carry the weight alone. We thank God for them. But research is proving that a child also desperately needs a daddy. There's no way around this fact. As you know, earlier this year, my family endured the tragic loss of our nine-year-old daughter, Emily. Her death forced me to realize that not only had I not taken advantage of the priceless time I had with her, but that I did not truly understand how crucial my role was as a father to her and our son, Dylan. Since her passing, I've asked God to show me through his word how to be the father that I need to be. I now believe that God desires for every father to courageously step up and do whatever it takes to be involved in the lives of his children. But more than just being there, providing for them, he's to walk with them through their young lives and be a visual representation of the character of God, their father in heaven. The father should love his children and seek to win their hearts. He should protect them, discipline them, and teach them about God. He should model how to walk with integrity and treat others with respect and should call out his children to become responsible men and women who live their lives for what matters in eternity. Some men will hear this and mock it or ignore it. But I tell you that as a father, you are accountable to God for the position of influence he has given you. You can't fall asleep at the wheel only to wake up one day and realize that your job or your hobbies have no eternal value but the souls of your children do. Some men will hear this and agree with it, but have no resolve to live it out. Instead, they will live for themselves and waste the opportunity to leave a godly legacy for the next generation. But there are some men who regardless of the mistakes we've made in the past, regardless of what our fathers did not do for us, will give the strength of our arms and the rest of our days to loving God with all that we are and to teach our children to do the same. And whenever possible, to love and mentor others who have no father in their lives, but who desperately need help and direction. And we are inviting any man whose heart is willing and courageous to join us in this resolution. In my home, the decision has already been made you don't have to ask who will guide my family, because by God's grace, I will. You don't have to ask who will teach my son to follow Christ, because I will. Who will accept the responsibility of providing and protecting my family? I will. Who will ask God to break the chain of destructive patterns in my family's history? I will. Who will pray for? and bless my children to boldly pursue whatever God calls them to do. I am their father. I will. I accept this responsibility and it is my privilege to embrace it. I want the favor of God 
and his blessing on my home. Any good man does. So where are you men of courage? Where are you fathers who fear the Lord? It's time to rise up and answer the call that God has given to you and to say, I will, I will, I will.